everyone, Neil Malik from Knack Training here bringing you another Everyday Office video. Today's video is about how to link together Microsoft Outlook and Microsoft OneNote to schedule a perfect meeting, take minutes for that meeting, and then ultimately be able to share the information with all the attendees. So if we begin in Microsoft Outlook, I'm using Outlook 2016 here with an Office 365 subscription. You can see uh, that uh, my vendor Eric has sent me an email as well as my coworker Jacqueline. Um, he's let us know that he's going to be available next week to have a meeting about an upcoming project. Now this is going to be a very large project and in fact I already went into Microsoft OneNote and as you can see here I've created a notebook for the Office 2019 training program and tabs for Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and Outlook. Each of the different sectors that we're going to be training on. But of course there's going to be a ton of planning and preparation beforehand. So if I decide that I want to schedule a meeting with Eric, but also to be able to organize this and to be able to store all the information about this project in a central location, it might be a good idea to go to OneNote and make a new tab specifically for the initial planning of this project. So I'll go to the plus sign here in OneNote, create a new tab that calls itself something like uh, initial planning and then maybe move that to the front of the line right over here and uh, maybe even recolor this, something that'll really stand out like lemon lime. Okay, so we have an initial planning section to our notebook and we have this email from Eric and we think to ourselves, okay, yeah, let's go ahead and meet with Eric on Thursday. So what I'll do here is in my email, go to the meeting button up at the top to reply with a meeting. You can see there the keyboard shortcut for this is also control alt R to be able to reply with a meeting. And when I click on this, the subject line of the, me of the email will become the subject of the meeting. The people who were on the email chain will now be invited to the meeting. And all that's left is for me to say that we're talking about Thursday morning starting at 9 a.m. and going to, let's say, 11 a.m. Then I'll pick a location here, one of my conference rooms, and maybe, well, at this point, I think to myself, you know, if I want to make some notes about this meeting, I probably want to do that in a more robust area. So this is where having OneNote 2016 with an Office 365 subscription installed on my machine is so nice. I'm going to go up to the top of my meeting and you can see here I can connect meeting notes to this meeting in Microsoft OneNote. So I'll click on meeting notes there and say yes, I, I would like to take notes on this meeting and immediately share all those notes in this, uh, in this page with all the people who are invited to the meeting. So I'll click on share notes with the meeting. And as you can see right down here, I have these different notebooks. And specifically, we're talking about the Office 2019 training program notebook. And then the section called initial planning. So I'll go ahead and put the meeting minutes for this meeting into the initial planning section. Click OK. You can see a link is generated right here that both Eric and Jacqueline will be able to open up my notes uh, using the web, using their desktop version of OneNote, whatever they decide to do. And I'll simply click send. Now at this point, if I go and visit the section in Microsoft OneNote that I was working on, you can see there's this initial planning tab and that right here, there's the office training project page. You can see the title comes from the email that Eric had sent me originally. The meeting date and location are listed here. If I click expand, I can actually see the email that was sent in the first place. I can collapse that back down. I can see not only who is coming to the meeting, but also their contact information. And then I can take notes. Now, besides the normal text notes that you might write up, do those sorts of things, I'm going to highly recommend that you try out, moving forward, this idea on the Insert tab of being able to record the audio of your meeting. Now, of course, there are certain meetings where recording audio is completely against all the corporate policies. 
But if you can you know, hook up a decent microphone to your laptop and click on record audio when the meeting starts, you can see, first of all, of course, there's the uh, audio file that's being created and it's recording now. And now it's at seven seconds and eight seconds and nine seconds and 10 seconds. Now, the reason I'm recommending this more than anything else is that at certain points in the process, of course, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to create a little section over here, maybe called um, action items, where my coworkers and any vendors who are at this meeting, we're all going to have to do the things that are listed over here. All right, so I come down here, I click the clear the formatting off of that, and maybe I put in a to do tag here that says, uh, Eric needs to, uh, let's say he needs to follow up with um, documentation. And then let's say that uh, Neil needs to forward information to executive team. And that Jacqueline needs to build marketing materials. Now, of course, the problem here is that this always happens to me when I take my notes. I don't remember what follow-up documentation even means. I don't remember what information I'm forwarding to the executive team, and I don't remember what the marketing materials involves. But here's the great thing. When I go to my audio and video tab and I stop the recording process, not only can I click on this audio file and push play, but if I come over here to the Neil entry under my action items, you'll see a little play button right here. And when I click the play button, then OneNote immediately jumps to the one minute mark in the audio track. Do you see that? If I click on Jacqueline right here and I push play, it immediately jumps to the minute and eight second portion of the audio track. If I go to Eric and I push play, again, the 45 second mark in the audio track. So I can see what was happening I can hear it through the audio of what was happening while the meeting was going on when I decided to write this little, uh, little note to myself. So being able to record the audio of the meeting and then play that back to show me what I was thinking about when I was writing notes is incredibly valuable. And then I can go even a step deeper. If I go here to my action items, to Eric's action item right here, I can go to my home tab and assign an Outlook task for Eric. So I'll go to Outlook tasks. I'll say that this is due, let's say next week. I'll go to Neil's task, again, say that it's due next week. And I'll go to Jacqueline's task. Go to my Outlook tasks and say that it's due next week. So now they have little flags next to them, but it doesn't really feel like that does anything. Now watch when I go back over here to Outlook. So I'm in Outlook and I go over to my task list in Outlook. And immediately I can see that things that are flagged for follow-up next week include that Eric needs to follow up with documentation, Neil needs to forward information to the executive team, and Jacqueline needs to build marketing materials. So these tasks have been auto-generated here inside of my Outlook based off of the notes in OneNote. If I go to one of these tasks, like this task for Jacqueline, and I double-click on it, you can see the link back to my OneNote notes about this thing that Jacqueline needs to do. And if I decide I actually want to assign it to Jacqueline, it's just this easy. I click on Assign Task. I put in Jacqueline's name right here. And now Jacqueline will receive a task that says that she needs to, by Friday the 26th, build the marketing materials. She'll see a hyperlink that takes her to the OneNote notebook where she can listen to the audio of the meeting of what we were discussing when we said she needed to build the marketing materials, and she'll have the full context of the meeting just like that. Now I can go back and I can track what's happening with Jacqueline just by opening up the task that's here. And when I go to OneNote, I can go back and I can track what's been uh, marked off because Eric and Jacqueline have access to these notes. They can flesh these out. They can make additional notes about this. There's no end to the depth that we can go when we're managing this project. So by connecting Microsoft Outlook and OneNote, we have this incredibly powerful tool 
for being able to loop people in, to give them the full context of what's happening in our project, and to be able to track whether the tasks are being accomplished at the right pace and the right time.